Hi, Mason Marsh here. Today I want to do some maintenance on one of my tripods. Tripods, like any tool, um, when you use them in tough environments, they do, uh, they do need a little maintenance. They need a little upkeep. And uh, for the most part, they're fairly simple machines, but um, if you take good care of them, uh, they will last you for years and years. If you don't, they'll fail on you or they'll become more difficult to use and become frustrating and you'll find yourself uh, leaving them in the car. So what I've got here is my uh, carbon fiber uh, Fiesel tripod and Acrotec head. And this is the tripod that I've had uh, for several years now and I've used it um, many, many times out in the uh, salt water, uh, in the sand, in the mud and um, I've maintained it uh, and kept it in great working condition these, for these years with just some simple cleanings, really. Uh, so we'll start up at the top at the head um, because honestly, this is the part that's furthest from the ground and usually requires the least amount of cleaning and maintenance. And um, I mentioned this in my tripods video uh, months ago, but one of the reasons I like the Acrotec head is the ball is exposed. So if it does get sand in it, all I have to do is rinse it off. So when I do my maintenance, usually all I do is I take a good look at the head and make sure the uh, leash is still in good shape. Um, big fan of the leash, right? And I might take a stiff bristled brush and just make sure that there are no uh, grains of sand or mud. Uh, anything that's going to cause uh, the head to get abraded or scratched and um, in this case everything looks looks really good. Typically what I'll do um, if I'm in a saltwater environment with this head is I'll just rinse it with fresh water and let it air dry um, and that's what I've done and so it's, it's fairly clean now. So that looks like it's in good shape. All the knobs um, working fine. Nothing needs to be adjusted. So I think this head is ready to go. Now the tripod legs, the sticks, um, the joints up at the top, these do get loose. These little bolts here um, tend to loosen up, especially the Fiesel for some reason uh, does not like to stay tight like some of my other tripods do. But I tightened these down really tight last time. And so I'm just checking, what I don't want is I don't want to raise the leg and have it flop back down. You don't want it to be loose, but you don't want it to be so stiff that it's hard to spread the legs on this. So I'm just checking these joints here and I'm taking a look in here. They have these little um, flip down latches that allow you to adjust or limit the adjustment of the angles and sometimes they get uh, loaded up with sand. Um, it's not, they're, they're such a simple little latch, you know, they just go into a, a, a set of teeth. There's really not much to worry about up here on these. Um, and these seem to be nice and tight. If I did need to tighten these down, what I would do is find the appropriate um, Allen wrench or hex key and uh, just crank these down. Now they, there's two bolts for each joint. And so what I would do is um, take the bolts out and put um, thread lock, you know, um, it's Loctite, different names for it, but uh, it's essentially a lightweight glue that will hold your screws in place. And, and keep them from loosening up. They'll still loosen up eventually, but it'll certainly uh, make them last longer. So that's what I did last time, and they're still holding up pretty well. So let's go down to the end that really does need the work, and that's the feet. Um, one of the things that I always uh, tell my students, and I always try to do myself, is before I walk out onto the beach, I try to extend my lower um, tripod legs at least six inches. And if I'm gonna be working in the water, um, I'll extend them all the way out. And what that does is it makes sure that I'm not putting my um, joints, these sockets here, I'm not putting them down into the salt water and the sand. Um, I'm gonna keep the lower leg, which has no moving parts down here. Now on my tripod on this Fiesel, I put these long spikes on here, <laughs> which are wonderful uh, on gr uh, sand, hard ground, grass, uh, carpet. They work really well, but they're they're sharp enough that if I whack myself in the leg with them or something, it would hurt. And if I'm on a wood floor or something, they'd scratch up. So what I did was I took, um, went down to the hardware store and bought some rubber stoppers and drilled holes in them um, so that these will fit over the spikes nice and snug and no metal sticks down. And so it allows me to have spiked feet on my tripod, but have the option of uh, making them safe and so I just want to make sure those are all in good shape they're a little dirty but those little rubber stoppers um, even though they're worn they still seem to be intact so uh, I'm gonna start with this leg 
what I'll do is I'm going to extend it all the way out and I'm just going to unscrew this all the way. A lot of threads on these. And they're very, very fine threads. And you're going to see that once I pull this out, um, there's a little plastic, a nylon collar that's got a, a split in it so that you can take it off. And this collar uh, is will load up with sand. It gets really dirty. And this one's pretty grimy. So I'm going to set this down. That's why I have the towel here on the table. And then when I pull the leg completely out, you'll notice this little nylon, uh, there's just two pieces here. One is a very thin nylon collar, and the other one is a stack of three nylon rings. So, all together, I have the tube, which is just carbon fiber tube, the metal um, grip, you know, knob, if you will, it tightens all this down. These three rings, the bushing, and this very thin sleeve that goes around the leg. Now I want to clean all of these items, and then I'm going to put them back in this tube, um, and I'll lubricate these threads. And so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use paper towels for this because these are pretty dirty, and uh, if I were in a hotel room doing this, I might be tempted to use a washcloth or something from the hotel, but I always do feel guilty about that because this stuff's nasty. Um, as you'll see here, I'm just using a little bit of Windex. You can use just plain water or soap and water if you wish. I like Windex because there's a little bit of grease on these. I thread these tripod legs with a little grease and I just want to take that uh, grease off because it's what's helping glue all this soot and dirt and whatever it is that I've collected here uh, on. So this is one of those nylon rings, and I'm just cleaning it up. I'll take the next one here. Now a lot of what you're going to see here on this paper towel is um, pretty black. It's, it's graphite, and it's a lubricant that I used on this leg to help it slide better in and out. And uh, a lot of it just kind of falls off and goes away, but um, some of it is accumulated on these rings, um, which is fine. I mean, that's it's what it's supposed to do, but it's going to make it look like these were a lot dirtier than they are. What I'm really worried about here is I want to make sure these, these things don't accumulate grit, big, big particles of sand, anything that's going to scratch the tripod leg or cause the mechanism to seize up. And how this works is really a pretty simple device. Um, as you tighten down the collar on the um, threads, uh, you're pulling the all of these pieces together and they'll clamp down on the tubing and that's what locks your leg in place. So if you've got grit and uh, accumulated nastiness in there, um, when you tighten it down it'll dig into the tripod leg and it'll scratch the carbon fiber or um, do damage in some other ways. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and just clean this tubing as well. The lower section of leg does take the most abuse. It's the one that's down in the sand and the dirt, um, the mud, wherever you're working. So I give it a good cleaning and I check it out and just make sure there's no cracks or any type of uh, problems with the carbon fiber. And carbon fiber is incredibly resilient, so usually you won't find any problems, but you can see here these lower leg sections for this Fiesel tripod. That's not very thick carbon fiber. So if it were to crack, uh, you're going to have a failure and you're going to need to order a new leg section, uh, which should be fairly simple to do through the company you buy the tripod from. Um, so now I'm just going to clean the inside of this next section of leg. And that's, that's nasty, right? <laughs> it's getting pretty dirty. And then I'm going to clean the threads. Now the threads on this, I had put um, some grease on there and you can see it's kind of a greenish yellow. Um, I want to get that old grease off because I'm going to put fresh grease on it. And I can go ahead and loosen this section. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to main do some maintenance on this tripod. It's, it's getting really hard to unlock these legs. Um, so I think these things are starting to load up. As I go through the winter, the tripod gets wet a lot. I think 
one of the secrets to keeping your tripod happy is to not let it sit for a long period of time uh, wet. And so you get the legs wet in the rain and you collapse it down and all that moisture is up inside the tube. And I think that's what I did with this. And so everything's gotten kind of stiff and sticky. Um, so that's a little maintenance will, should fix that. Uh, last piece is the inside of this collar. This is the other threaded component. So I want to make sure I get all that grease and any accumulated sand. In fact, this is usually where I'll find a lot of the sand is inside the collar. Uh, gets built up in there and you can see that's that was pretty dirty um, Already I'm on I'm one piece into this um, <laughs> Into this job and I'm already dirty so got I'm gonna take a quick look in here make sure there's no uh, Sand there's nothing stuck in here pieces of grass sometimes will get pulled up in there um, Working around a lot of tall grass you get that stuff sneaks up in here when you tighten these down and it gets cut off and, and kind of spread around inside there. So I'm just gonna slide this on and off once just to, and as I do it, I can feel there's a few pieces of sand. I just felt it kind of grind around a little bit. So I'm gonna slide it back off. And I'll just do a quick brush of the threads just to make sure I'm getting as much off as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? But, you know, I do it if it's not a thorough job. So it's still pretty greasy and pretty dirty. But now I've got all my components and it's not a bad idea to keep them lined up so you kind of have an idea of how they go. But um, <laughs> I've done this tripod a few times now so I can remember the uh, order of things. The first time I did it, it took me a while to figure it out. Um, so I'm gonna put the collar back on the leg so that it's, it's, it starts the, the process. And then um, I've got all these split rings. This one is the one that the collar pushes on. And it's got, oh my, it's really crusted up. It's got a good layer of who knows what on it. That's better. So I'm gonna put that back on the tubing. So it goes collar, I'll call this the compression piece. And then it goes up against these split rings. Now, um, the rings are all different. Uh, they're beveled on the inside, and some are, um, call them chamfered. Some are chamfered outwardly, and some are inwardly, and so they all fit together in a, like a puzzle. And so I gotta make sure that I put them on in a way so when the compression ring pushes against them, they go in, in order, go in turn. And then this, the last piece is this really fragile, thin uh, little collar, and it's got a, um, it's got little, little bumps on the inside that line up with the holes. And it's very important you get them seated in the holes, otherwise, this whole thing will not work. It'll just slide off of this inside the leg and the whole leg will just fall off when you loosen it up. So if it does that, uh, just unscrew everything, slide it out, dump everything out of that leg, and, uh, and you'll be all set. <laughs> Cooper's helping me out today. He uh, got, got your fire truck going, bud. So I'm putting a little bit of graphite on here. These parts move inside the leg, and so I'm just gonna give them a little bit of graphite to uh, keep them with a dry lubricant. And then I'm gonna use uh, this stuff called VersaLube, which is a silicone-based uh, lubricant. I got this off of Amazon. The graphite is a powdered graphite lubricant. This is also um, from Amazon. You can probably find it in a lot of places locally, but I didn't wanna go digging around. So I'm just gonna put a, a bit of this silicone lubricant on the threads and just spread it around with my finger. It's going to make sure that this collar, when I do s screw it on here, I make sure it's it's going to stay uh, free to move. I really don't want to get out in the field and have this lock up on me and not be able to extend the legs of my tripod. So I'm going to slide them all in. 
very carefully, make sure I don't cross thread this as I start it. Thread it on all the way. And now I've got to test it and see. Yeah. And it doesn't come out. You want to make sure your leg doesn't just fly out. That means you didn't put the bushings on right on the inside. And that is clean off any excess grease that's up here on the top because that's where the sand will get in if it's especially if it's got grease to stick to. So clean that off. And that there you have it. So there's one down. I've got this one up here would be the next one I would do And then there's two more on each of the legs now this tripod um, Is only got two joints on each leg or two uh, of these little locking mechanisms in each leg if you've got a tripod um, That's got three or four leg sections. This is a pretty good job So you're gonna sit down and maybe play some music have a cup of coffee and uh, Take your time, but it's something like I said you're gonna want to do uh, pretty frequently if you're working around salt water, uh, sand, or anything that's going to accumulate in your tripod uh, joints. And uh, if you take good care of it, these things will stay easy to use, smooth, and um, your tripod will last for years and years of, of happy photography. So hope you, uh, hope you got some good tips here. Uh, I'm going to finish this job up and maybe get outside today and enjoy this beautiful weather. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.